Hey, welcome back everybody to a yet another episode of Powerhouse Tactical. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing uh, what FISA is. So we hear the term FISA and FISA court and you know, FISA application and all these things on the TV all the time, uh, yet many of us don't quite know exactly what FISA is and exactly how it works. So we're going to dive right into it. Uh, and before we go on, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel uh, to show us our, your support. Uh, let's talk about it. So, when did this FISA thing start? So, Congress, U.S. Congress, uh, enacted the Foreign Intelligence Service Surveillance Act. So, let me uh, let me read say that a Foreign F Intelligence I Surveillance S and an Act, the law. So FISA, uh, back in 1978, um, they started this uh, to fight the unlawful surveillance uh, of Americans uh, by FBI and CIA during the uh, Watergate era. Uh, President Richard Nixon famously um, said after he left the office, he said, when the presidents do it, <laughs> that means that it's not illegal. So with that kind of philosophy, uh, he used the uh, FBI and the uh, um, CIA to spy on uh, his political um, opponents. So the stated reason for the FISA, uh, or the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, was national security. So Nixon claimed that foreign agents uh, physically present uh, foreign agents physically uh, pres present in the U.S. Um, messed around with his political opponents, the Democrats at the time, and uh, that helped to create the whole anti-Vietnam uh, War sentiment among the American people, So, which had uh, no basis to it. There is no factual evidence of that, but even so, uh, um, the, 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 the neocons in the Congress and the military industrial complex uh, supported it, supported the whole idea of uh, spying on the American people uh, using an excuse as uh, that there are foreign spies uh, within our country, even after Nixon left the office. So this view there, that there are foreigners among us who wishes us harm came uh, to really fruition during the presidency of Jimmy Carter, who pushed for the enactment of FISA. So FISA's stated purpose at the time was to limit, not expand, but limit the government surveillance uh, powers uh, by requiring the uh, government lawyers to apply and get approved and also the judges will have to intervene and also they'll have to get the permission from the judge to uh, um, operate such surveillance um, uh, efforts. But wait a minute, uh, isn't Fourth Amendment pretty much guarantee us um, that government searches already have to have a uh, uh, warrant re approved and signed by judges to do uh, do and, and there has to be a probable cause for they have to prove probable cause in order for them to be able to get these warrants uh, to either search or spy on the uh, uh, people within the American soil so what was new with FISA what, why did we need FISA, even though we already had Fourth Amendment? The Constitution requires, like I said, probable cause uh, of a crime to be demonstrated to a judge before the judge can sign a search warrant or, or a warrant for surveillance spying. That was the law of the land until FISA came along. Uh, and FISA set up the Foreign Intelligence Services Court, also known as FISA Court, uh, and it authorized the judges on that court to issue search warrants based on a lower standard of probable cause. Um, I would think that's uh, 
that's a, a violation of the Constitution, especially the Fourth Amendment, wouldn't it? Of course it is. Uh, but a challenge, but 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 that challenge has never, never reached a non-FISA court, uh, uh, federal court, because the government never used what they found through uh, surveillance uh, warranted by FISA court in a criminal case. Why didn't they use it? Because they didn't, if they had used that evidence in a regular court, the regular court always has uh, the adversary, right? So the prosecutor brings in an evidence or uh, shows probable cause, claims probable cause in order for the warrant. And then the defense attorney will dispute that, challenge that until through due process, they can prove that it was justified. If it weren't, then the court will be forced to throw that evidence out, right? So because they didn't want their uh, uh, FISA warrants to be questioned, they never directly used any evidence that was gathered through uh, unconstitutional means of FISA, FISA warrants um, in any criminal cases ever. It gets worse. So because FISA court meets in secret, so there's no uh, defense attorneys or any of that, uh, and only government lawyers appear before it, uh, we have a dangerous recipe here. Uh, the secrecy and no defense counsel. That combination produces tyranny. Uh, that combination has the standard for issuing search warrants uh, sliding off even further down the slope of tyranny and uh, just complete absurdity. Uh, FISA establishes probable cause of foreign agency as the standard. So any foreign agency, like foreign company or foreign intelligence agency, uh, so uh, for example, uh, uh, embassy, Russian embassy in Washington, D.C., uh, consulate general's office of China in Chicago, and so on and so forth. These foreign agencies um, will be justified to be surveilled. However, that over time has morphed into a probable cause of foreign personhood. So if you're a foreign national in this country, uh, FISA... Uh, Warren can be applied for and will will pretty much be approved uh, for government to be able to surveil uh, you. And then that's not the end. And then it evolved even, or I should say devolved, even further to probable cause of speaking to a foreign person. So anyone, even American citizens, who have spoken with such foreign persons are now subject to be able to be surveilled according to the FISA standards of probable cause. Now that already sounds completely ridiculous, but it goes one step further. And it finally devolved into a probable cause of speaking to any person who has ever spoken to a foreign person. So, so if a friend of mine has spoken to a, uh, a, a potential foreign agent, and I spoke obviously with my friend, then now I am a justifiable subject of a FISA surveillance. All of this, all of this morphing from you know, uh, uh, probable cause of foreign agency to foreign person to speaking to a foreign person to speaking to a person who spoke with a foreign person. This whole thing went on over past few decades in secret. No one knew about it. This slow but very persistent destruction uh, of the Fourth Amendment right to be left alone which is ostensibly guaranteed by the Fourth Amendment, came about not only by secret, but the absence of adversaries. 
and also judicial gullibility and constitutional infidelity. Judges have a tendency to accept uncritically these unchallenged applications presented to them. This is an inherent defect of the FISA court judges whose decisions slowly and materially weakened the already unconstitutional FISA probable cause standard. FISA court judges have granted literally 99.97% of all applications for search warrants that ever came before them. <laughs> all of this is presented now uh, as a historical and legal background for an understanding of the report of the Inspector General of the DOJ, uh, uh, Michael Horowitz, on the FBI's use of FISA uh, to surveil the Trump campaign in 2016 and 2017. That report, released earlier last week, uh, concludes that the original FISA uh, standard, the probable cause of foreign agency, was met when Australian intelligence agents tipped off CIA and the FBI agents claiming that Donald Trump's foreign policy advisors uh, were saying that um, he had ties to Kremlin. Now, was there an evidence? Was there a material witness? There was nowhere near uh, enough evidence to justify probable cause if it were a regular court. But because it was a FISA court, that they didn't really need that. They didn't need all that. Um, so the FBI then took that tip and added it, added a, a bunch of erroneous and incomplete and unverified materials and convinced FISA court to issue warrants to uh, spy on the Trump advisors and the campaign. So the DOJ's uh, Inspector General, Michael Horowitz, found that the beginning, in the beginning of the investigation, it was lawful and non-political, but its expansion and uh, continu continuance uh, uh, made the substantial violation of the DOJ, Department of Justice, and the FBI protocols. And more. Um, the FISA is not only unconstitutional, it is also inherently uh, corrupting of our gov government officials. So when the government, uh, government prosecutors seek a search warrant um, in accordance to the Fourth Amendment, they are very careful. They're very careful to document all of their allegations and evidence. Um, they know that if uh, their target, whoever they're targeting, uh, ever gets indicted, the target's lawyer will have access to all of their applications for the warrants, uh, and they can challenge its assurance. So in the, for example, in the middle of a homicide trial, uh, um, a judge is forced to reverse and nullify a warrant that was issued previously if um, judge learns that the government, the prosecutor's office, had intentionally kept exculpatory evidence from the judge in order to get the warrant. That would be illegal. So in those kind of cases happen all the time, all the time. That's why uh, prosecutors go the extra mile to make sure that when their warrants and all the evidence that they uh, end up finding through that warrant um, gets questioned, that they are protected by making sure that they can prove and justify every allegation uh, for probable cause, which is uh, the due process that is guaranteed to all Americans by our uh, Constitution, specifically the Fourth Amendment. There is no such exposure 
under FISA court, though. And the FBI and NSA agents know this. They also know uh, that their methods <coughs> and application to the secret FISA court will never be exposed to the defense counsel or to the public. Of course, until now. Now, we've seen a case involving the President of the United States, a material alteration of a document, reliance on unverified allegations, substantial omissions, agents lying to each other, applications signed by DOJ and FBI uh, uh, upper guys uh, who never even read much less questioned what they were signing. All done with the false comfort that their misdeeds would not come to light ever. Were they wrong? Um, some of the uh, intelligence and law enforcement uh, folks uh, told me that two generations long, for two generations long, FBI agents have come to believe uh, that if they have a weak case, if they have, uh, if they lack enough uh, probable cause to obtain a search warrant, they can always get one from FISA court. The FISA court is a complete violation of the Constitution of the United States and to the con concept of an independent judicial branch. And it took an Inspector General's report on the FBI and the impeachment efforts of the President of the United States to force all these out into the light. So I hope that helped uh, some of you to have a little bit of a better understanding on what FISA is and how FISA works and how unconstitutional it is. Uh, through today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, uh, this material. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you could click like and uh, uh, share and of course subscribe so that uh, you can be notified when a new episode is uh, uh, posted. Uh, again, I really appreciate you guys joining me once again um, and uh, I will be bringing even more important information to you guys soon. In future episodes um, we really need to be informed we really need to continue this type of discussions so that we're not fooled or duped by the fake news fake media uh, and the ones who control them uh, until then stay safe stay yellow god bless you and god bless our republic <laughs>